Perspective is a mathematical technique used to show 3D objects on a 2D surface. One point perspective is any scene where the lines converge or come together into one vanishing point. If you look closely, you can see that many of the lines come together into one point. In the city drawings, it's found on the horizon line, which is where the sky meets the earth. The drawing on the top right is a little bit unique because there are two points and you can see both sides of the boxes, one going to one side and the other going to the other point. The first step for drawing your own one point perspective scene is to draw a horizon line with a vanishing point in the center. If you want to make sure your ruler is completely horizontal, you can measure from the top of your paper down a few inches. I'll measure down four inches on this side. Slide your ruler over, measure down four inches, and make a mark. And then once you have marks on either side, then you can draw across. Your vanishing point should be in the center, and since my paper is 12 inches long, I will mark at the six inch mark right on that horizon line. The second step is to use your ruler to draw shapes on your paper. All right, I have most of my shapes drawn and I wanna show you one tip on how to draw a circle if you don't have a compass in this corner. What I do is I move my whole arm. I don't bend at my wrist, but I move my whole arm. And then I will slowly lower my hand so my pencil touches the paper and I'll just move in a repetitive motion. Once you have a bunch of sketchy lines down, then you can choose which lines you want to keep and darken those. I have my shapes on my paper and now I am ready to move on to step three. Step three is where you will use a ruler to draw lines from the corners or edges of your shapes to the vanishing point. I like to use my pencil to mark my vanishing point and I will mark my ruler there and I will swing it around until it comes in contact with a corner. So for this shape in the center, I mark my pencil down here and I move and pivot my ruler until it hits the corner. Test out on all corners of your shape and see if the line intersects the shape. For this corner, if I were to draw it, it would intersect the shape. Now that would work well if your shape is see-through, but for this project, we are just going to draw solid shapes, so I will not be drawing that line. If your line intersects with any of the shape or another shape, you stop the line and don't draw it. So this one I will not draw either. Let's test out this bottom corner. You can draw that. Draw lightly because you will end up erasing some of your lines. I'll move on to the next shape. This corner works. Now for this corner, as I draw, I see that it comes in contact with the diamond. I'm going to stop and I'm not going to continue drawing that line. You'll see that when I move down to the diamond shape, go from vanishing point to the edge of the shape, it looks like this line goes behind this shape. You can see on this shape, as I drew the line, it came in contact with another part of the shape, so I ended up stopping. That's the case as well, and you'll see at the, at the top of with the arrow. On this corner, I still want to try to draw it to the vanishing point, but I'll see that it hits the shape, and so I will stop. All right, it looks like I have most of my shapes drawn. I saved the circle for last because any time you have a curve, it's a little bit tricky. But it's the same concept where you will pivot your ruler with your vanishing point until it hits the edge of the curve. 
So in this case, it barely brushes against there, so I will draw that side. I will pivot once again until it hits the other edge. So for, in this case, until I can barely see that little circle poking out by my ruler, and then I will draw that. This will create a cylinder when we move on to our next step. Step four is where you will shorten each shape by drawing parallel lines that match the front of the shape. So my drawing here looks a little bit crazy because there's so many lines going to the vanishing point, so I'm going to end up shortening the shapes. I'll start with the square on the top. I'm going to match my ruler up to the side of the shape that I want to shorten. So, and that would be the section that is between the lines that go to the vanishing point. So I can decide, do I want my square really, really skinny or my rectangle really skinny, or do I want it really long? You can decide how long you want your shape to be. I'm going to draw and shorten parallel lines for all of my shapes on the sides that go towards the vanishing point. We will also be erasing the lines that extend. So as you're working, you can do that or you can wait until the very end. Now it looks like my rectangle is a little bit shorter. It does not go on forever and ever. I match my ruler up with the edge of the shape and I slide it over. Match it up, slide it over. You can see in my arrow, what I did was I copied the edge of the shape facing me. I did the same thing towards the vanishing point more so. So I have a horizontal line here, horizontal line here, vertical line here, vertical line here, horizontal, horizontal, and this is more of just a diagonal line that I had to just create on my own. For the circle, you are going to copy the same concept. You are going to copy this line, the curve of the line, and do it further towards the vanishing point. So I'm going to just draw a curve here. And step number five is that you erase lines that go beyond the edges of the shape to the vanishing point. I will use a big eraser for this, and I'm just going to erase all the lines that go to the vanishing point that extend beyond my shape that I shortened. If you want to keep your horizon line, you can, so you can have a sky and earth, or you can erase the whole thing. Before we move on to the coloring step, I wanna show you why I think One Point Perspective is so awesome. I have a box here that I'm gonna demonstrate. And I want you to take a look at when the box is right at your eye level, this would be on the horizon line, you can only see the front of the box and the side of the box. You can't see the top or the bottom. When I raise the box up above your eye level, you can see the bottom of the box. And when I lower the box below your eye level, you can see the top of the box. If I have it on one side or the other, you can start to see one of the sides of the box. So depending on where the box is in your field of vision, you can see different sections of the box. The neat thing is that with your drawing, you are mirroring what actually happens when you really look at a shape. This box is in the top right, and I can see the front of it, I can see the bottom, and I can see the left side. And that's what really happens when you're looking at shapes and 3D objects in real life space. 